Salawam Yasha'Allah. This is Brother Mapathop. That'd be key, but in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. And um, this is going to be a quick video. Just going into um, why, why the importance in remembering the, the past acts of our forefathers. You know, and, and ultimately the importance of reading the scriptures. You know, and allowing these accounts to dwell within your heart, man. And, and meditating on these accounts. You know, we're going to go right into it. And before we go into it, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto the Heavenly Father, um, whose name is Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, right? Bahashem Rokakadash. And I want to give uh, double honors to the elders of Great Millstone who taught us this truth through the Holy Spirit. And salutations to the elect and the brothers on the four corners of the earth that's teaching this gospel in truth and sincerity. And um, I'm going to start this off here. Let's actually go to um, Joshua, the first chapter. <clears throat> right so this is joshua 8 1 and verse 8 it says this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night right so this 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 word should never depart from your mouth you should always be speaking about this word you should always be reading this word and you should always be meditating on this word right it says but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein then sh thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success. You see, so when you're constantly meditating on this word, allowing this word to dwell within your heart, you know, that's how you're going to make your way prosperous because you're going to know how how, to, how your forefathers, your righteous forefathers, deal with specific situations. You're going to know how they please the Heavenly Father and also how they made the, the Heavenly Father angry. You know, you're going to know how they deal with um, times of affliction, times of adversity, and so on and so forth. So that's why it's important to meditate on the scriptures. You know, and don't allow this word to, to depart from your mouth, meaning you constantly read the scriptures, you're constantly in the scriptures, man, you know, which is the secret place of the heavenly father. Right. So um, let's actually get to that Psalm, the 91st chapter. So all these accounts that we read, man, they're there. I'm gonna actually get that first. Salakia. I don't really have nothing uh, prepared. It's going through the spirit. Right. But this is uh, Romans 15 and verse four. It says, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. You see? That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And this, and this is really good in the NIV as well. I'm going to read this in the NIV. It says, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. So that through, in, that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. You see, that's, that's, that's key, man. You know, that's pretty much what I want to go into in this lesson, how... Remembering these scriptures and getting into these scriptures is going to help you in the times of trouble, you know, in the times where you really need to endure when you when you feel like you want to give up, man. If you remember the, the, the accounts of old, you know, remember what our forefathers went through and how they persevered. That has strengthened you, man. You know, so um, you want to really read the scriptures. It's important to really read the scriptures to tell you. It tells you in Revelation, the first chapter, blessed is he that readeth. You know, you're blessed when you read the, the word of the Heavenly Father. You know? So, um, let's go to Psalm 91. This is Psalm chapter 91 and verse, um, start from the top. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. What is the secret place of the Heavenly Father? It's His word, man. You know? You have to dwell in the secret place of the Lord. You have to constantly be... Um, meditating on the scriptures, man. Constantly reading the scriptures, man. You know, constantly studying the scriptures. Praying for more understanding. Praying for more faith. You know, constantly teaching the scriptures. And then that's pretty much all I wanted from that. It says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Meaning you're going to be protected. And the elect are going to dwell in the secret place of the Heavenly Father. They're going to dwell in his word. You know, and it's a spirit behind the word, which we know to be the comforter, which we're going to get into. Right. But let's get this first. And um, and first Maccabees two. And, and um, we're going to start here. Verse uh, 50, it says, now, therefore, my sons, be ye zealous for the law and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. Right. So be zealous for this word. Right. Verse 51, it says, call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. See, and that's, that's the point that I'm trying to uh, touch on, man. And that's why it's important to read the scriptures to be able to call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. Because that's going to be the um, 
the stability of our times, man. It's wisdom and knowledge that we obtain from the from the word of the heavenly father, man. You know? To be able to remember remember like okay, Abraham didn't lose faith in this situation. Noah didn't lose faith. Daniel didn't lose faith. You know? That's going to be the stability of our times, man. That's going to be our comfort. You know, when we go through different trials and different adversities, different obstacles, the accounts in the scriptures is what's going to help us persevere and endure. You know, so it says call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. So shall you receive great honor and an everlasting name. Was not Abraham found faithful in um, temptation and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. You see. Remember what Abraham did. Remember the faith of Abraham, man. You know, and Abraham's faith was imputed unto him um, for righteousness. You know, the Lord asked Abraham to sacrifice Isaac and he didn't even question it, man. He went straight. Um, to, uh, he went straight to do it, man. You know, and the Lord didn't even have him do it. The Lord was just testing his faith. You know, verse 53, it says, Joseph, in the time of his distress, kept the commandment. And was made Lord of Egypt, right? Phineas, our father, and being zealous and fervent, obtained the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, right? And this is and when you read this in this context, it was Mattathias um, running these things down to his to um, his sons, man. You know, to help build their faith. You know, and this this is what's going to build our faith in a time of trouble. Thinking about the acts of our forefathers, you know. So it says. Uh, Verse 55, it says, Yahweh Shai, which is speaking about Joshua, um, for fulfilling the word, was made a judge in Israel. Caleb, for bearing witness before the congregation, received the heritage of the land. David, for being merciful, possessed the throne of an everlasting kingdom. Elijah, for being zealous and fervent for the law, was taken up into heaven. Ananias, Azariah, and Mishael, which is speaking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It says, by believing, we're saved out of the flame. And that's that's one of my favorite accounts, man. You know, if our forefathers were willing to go into a burning fury furnace, you know, all because they, they, they didn't want to bow down to the heathen's image. You see? And that's a foreshadow of what's coming, of what's to come. Because we read about the image. If you don't um, worship the image in Revelation, the 13th chapter, um, which is the um, ultimately the new world order of Esau, you're going to be put to death, man. That's Revelation 13 and 15, you know? So it says, um, I'm going to read verse 59 again. It says, Ananias, Azarias, and Mishael, by believing, were saved out of the flame. Yet they were willing to lay down their life for the heavenly father, man. You know, and ultimately the Lord sent down an angel to deliver them. Verse 60, it says, Daniel, for his innocence, he was delivered from the mouth of lions. You see, and Daniel was delivered because his hands were clean. He was innocent in the eyes of the Lord, you know? It says, and thus consider ye throughout all ages that none that put their trust in him shall be overcome. And if you put your trust in the heavenly father, you won't be overcome. You know, and that's a great uh, lesson to learn from our forefathers who never lost faith, even in the times of great adversity. You know, and um, let's go to uh, John 14. And this is why it's important. And we have to be thankful that the Lord sent down his spirit in these last days, because that's ultimately how. We have the understanding and, and, and remember the things that our forefathers did, man. You know, that's why we go into the scriptures all because of the spirit of Yahweh Shai. Right? So the, this is John 14 and verse 16. It says, I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter. Right? It says that he may abide with you forever. And that comforter is speaking about the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of Yahweh Shai, man. You know? And it says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because they see of him not. And everybody can't receive the spirit. You know, it's only for the elect. It says, Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Right? I want to jump down a little bit. Verse 26, right? Because it's the point. It says, But the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. See that? And that's why we, we we go into the scriptures and we're starting to remember the acts of our forefathers. You know, because the Lord sent his spirit down. The spirit of Yahweh Shai. You know? And, um, and it says, peace, I leave you. 
with uh, Salakia. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Right? So that's ultimately how we call these things to remembrance. It's all through the spirit of the Lord. You know? All through the spirit of Yahawashai. You see? So when we go into the history, we go into um, Daniel the eighth chapter. You know, we go into the book of Maccabees. We go into all these different historical accounts about our forefathers. Um, it's all through the spirit of the Lord, man. You know, we didn't just wake up one day and say, I want to I want to remember my all of my history. You know, I want to uh, go into all my Israelite history. That's all this. The spirit of the Lord, the comforter say he's going to cause you to remember all things, man. You know. And um, you go here in John 15. Um, right, it speaks about the comforter as well. But uh, let's go to Isaiah 33. Right, and I believe it's one in Job as well. Job, uh, come on, I'm gonna read this first. It's Job 8 and 8. It says, For inquire, I pray thee of the former age and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. It says, Right, so we have to we had to prepare ourselves for the search of our fathers, man. You know, and um, that's super important, right? Check this out. This is a uh, Isaiah fifty-one and verse two. It says, "Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bear you." You see, look unto Abraham, look unto your forefathers. You know, that's our um, our role models. You know, and ultimately Yahweh. You see, when we look, when we read, and we understand. The different accounts, man, that's going to build your faith so much, man. You know, and um, that's a spirit because I'm going to read on in this and then I'm going to go to the next scripture. It says, for I call him alone and blessed him and increased him. So look at what I did for Abraham, you know, and, and take Abraham as an example. And you see, Paul was teaching that in Romans, the fourth chapter to um, look at the faith of Abraham. When you go into Hebrews, the 11th chapter, it's a whole chapter about the different acts and, and uh, about the faith of our forefathers, man. You know, but um, I want to go to this point in Romans 10, going into why it's so it's so so, 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 lucky, it's so important to hear the word of the heavenly father, to read the word of the heavenly father, man. Right. This is Romans 10 and verse 17. Um, bear, bear, bear with me. Con, it says Romans 10 and 17. Um, Romans 10 and 17 reads. So then faith cometh by hearing, you see. Hearing the words of the Heavenly Father, reading the words of the Heavenly Father increases faith, man. You know, you have to be constantly in this word. You see, because sometimes you can get caught up in that situation where um, you're not really reading much. You just you may be uh, doing videos. You may be going on the highways and byways, you know. But you really you're not really reading, man. You know, you, you're not even reading a chapter a day, man. You see. Brothers, brothers can go through that slump sometimes, and uh, you like, man. As long as I'm, I'm doing, hey, I'm doing a video, you know, I'm throwing up a few prayers, but you forget to read, man. But it's so important to read, you know. Reading is really one of the best faith boosters that we have. Just getting into the words of our of our Lord, you know. So it says, then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of the heavenly Father. You see. So faith cometh. By hearing and hearing by the word of the heavenly father. So we have to constantly be in this word, man. It's going to boost our faith, man. You know? And the faith that we get through reading is going to be the um, stability of our times, man. That wisdom knowledge that we get through reading is going to be the stability of our times, man. You know? Let's go to Isaiah 33. So that's pretty much what I wanted to touch on in this lesson is... uh. Just make sure you're, you're, you're reading, man, and call into remembrance the acts of our forefathers. Because how could you remember these things if you're not going into the accounts? You know, and this thing is about repetition. You might have read Genesis when you first came into the truth six months ago or a year ago, however long you came into the truth. You know, five years, six years. But you don't remember the accounts, man. You know, that's why this truth is about repetition. You might read it again. And you might be like, oh, I forgot that happened or I forgot the exact detail of this uh, situation. You know, you might forget things so that you have to constantly continue to read and meditate on the word, man. You know, the elder apostles will tell you all the time. This truth is about repetition, man. You know, 
So this is Isaiah 33 and verse 6. It says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and strength of salvation. The fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is his treasure. You see, in his word, you know, because we know the word is wisdom and knowledge. You know, and ultimately the spirit that comes with the word, was the, which is the spirit of Yahweh Shai. That's going to be the stability of thy times, man. Being able to remember this word, hide in this word in your heart, man. You know, King David said, I hate, I, um, I hide your word in your heart so that I may not sin. Roughly paraphrasing. It's important to allow the word of the Heavenly Father to dwell within you, man. You know, and that comes through repetition, man. You see? That comes through constantly reading, constantly studying, constantly being taught. You know? And that's what's going to keep you strong. And I believe there's another count in um, 2 Maccabees. Um, let me see. I haven't read this one in a while. Um, bear with me. Um... No, nah, I can't. I can't find it. But I, I could have sworn there was another one that pretty much goes into how Judas Maccabeus. Um, let me see. Let me check my sword real fast. Bear with me. Come on, that's, I, I believe this is what I want. Second Maccabees five. I mean, fifteen. And um, let's start from verse seven. It says, but Maccabeus had ever sure confidence that the Lord would help him. Wherefore, he exhorted his people not to fear the coming of the heathen against him, but to remember the help which in former times they had received from heaven and now to expect the victory and aid um, which should come unto them from the almighty. Now, check this out. Verse nine. This is the point I wanted to get. It says, and so comforting them out of the law and the prophets. So he comforted his, his brothers in the time of war by going into the scriptures, man. You know, by going into the scriptures and reading different accounts, man, there's no other better faith booster than that. And in, in a time of war, he opened up the scriptures and that's how he comforted his brothers, man. And we read that in Romans, the 15th chapter that um, um, this, the scriptures are going to be for our comfort, roughly paraphrasing. You know, it says so. And so comforting them out of the law and the prophets and without putting them in mind. Of the battles that they won afford. See, he put them in mind of the battles that they won afford. You know, so he went into the, the um he went into the scriptures and said, Remember, the Lord delivered us from this battle. You know, he might have went to David and Goliath. You know, see, see this uh David delivered Goliath from a um a giant, from a lion, um, from a bear, you know. He delivered um Daniel from the lion's den. There's no telling what accounts he went to, is as many accounts he could have went to. You know, but the point is, he went into the scriptures to exhort his brothers, man. You know, he called to, he, he called to remembrance the acts of his forefathers and that increased their faith. It says, and so comforting them out of the law and the prophets and without putting them in the mind of the battles that they won afore, he made them more cheerful. You see that? And through going into the scriptures, he made them more cheerful, man. You know, and, and ultimately when you read the rest of this chapter, they end up um, beheading Nicanor, man. You know, and they won that war, right? All, all through um the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. You know, so um that's pretty much all I wanted to touch on this lesson. Lord willing, it was edifying. Make sure to stay into these, uh, stay in these accounts and continue meditating on the words of the Heavenly Father, man. You know, because the wisdom and knowledge is going to be the stability of, of of these in these last days. That's going to be our stability, man. You know, that's what's going to keep you strong. That's what's going to help you endure. You know, like we read in Romans the tenth chapter. Um, hearing, I mean, faith comes by hearing the word of the heavenly father, man, you know, so, so continue to meditate on these accounts, man, continue to read these accounts, make sure you're reading daily, you know, and, um, with that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakadash, Shalom.